Uh, over the last 20 years, there's been a, a, a continuing uh, discussion in public library land over whether or not li the library should include a, uh, a refreshment service or, uh, you know, a coffee bar or something. Um, you know, it, it, that would go into special use space. You know, our patrons go to the Barnes and Noble. They used to go to Borders. They would see these features. You know, and then they come to the library and they'd say, "Gee, that you know, that's 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 civilized. Why can't we have that here in the library?" Um, you know, and again, fair question for discussion. And every community is going to resolve that question in its own way. But if you're categorizing the space, the space fits in special use space. Um, yeah, I have to say, I, I was introduced as coming from uh, Illinois, but the fact of the matter is I consider myself a Wisconsinite. So I have to mention, as we're talking about refreshment areas and so on, as, as, as someone who hails from Wisconsin, I've long harbored the hope that someday I'll be able to, to do a combination library and brew pub. <laughs> so the brew pub would be special use space. <laughs> the last kind of space is called non-assignable space, and I've always defined non-assignable space as all those spaces that you have to have in order to have a functioning building, but where the fire marshal won't let you put books. Non-assignable space is the mechanical room. Non-assignable space is the stairwells and the elevator shaft in a multi-level building. It's the restroom. You know, technically, non-assignable space is the space occupied on the floor by this wall, which serves to keep the outside out and us in here. Uh, you, know, I mean, you need to, to accommodate that, um, and that falls under, under non-assignable space. Again, the gist is you can look at the, the library service goals relative to each of these types of space, make a forecast as to what kind of resource inventory the li library should provide, then you can translate that into a, a space need. Now, yeah, we're not going to go through the whole exercise, you know, kind of marching through each of those seven types of floor space, but I am going to focus us on collection space, or at least a, a part of the discussion of collection space by way of, by way of an example. I mean, if you want the whole story, again, the, the draft report is on the website, and you can go home, you can download it, and if you really have trouble falling asleep tonight, just read it. You'll be good. So, you know, what kind of collection inventory should this library support? Well, the, we, we chose to, to seek an answer to that, problem, that question by going to a database of library statistics that's maintained by the IMLS, the Institute for Museum and Library Services. It's a federal agency that in part works with state library agencies to <laughs> gather data from the public libraries across the country. The, li the, the IMLS uh, every year develops a database for, of annual report data of, from all the libraries across the country, 9,000 plus public libraries feed uh, statistics and, and use data and collection inventory data to the IMLS, and the IMLS publishes that data we, uh, we, we took the latest version of, the, of that, and from that database, we pulled five cohorts to compare Belleville against. We, we pulled a cohort of all of the libraries in Michigan. Put a little asterisk by there because we didn't really use all of the libraries in Michigan. The fact of the matter is, Michigan is a pretty diverse state, and there are a lot of libraries in Michigan that are a lot bigger than Belleville. There are a lot of libraries that are a lot smaller than Belleville. And we questioned whether or not the experience of those really larger and really smaller libraries would be you know, kind of relevant to the experience of Belleville. So we, we took the liberty of removing from the all-state sample the top five and, and bottom five percent of libraries. We then took a sample of all of the libraries in the region we defined region as roughly, you can see this lower, uh, this lower map here, roughly a, a radius of 250 miles around Belleville. Now it's not really a radius because we, just, we use the radius to identify north, south, east, and west. And then you can go into the, uh, the IMLS database which does log latitude and longitude for every public library in the country. You know, think of the lucky person who had that <laughs> job. Um, and, you know, 
we kind of squared the circle, as you see in this, in this illustration, but that shows you the extent of, of the area that's captured by all libraries in the region. Again, a little asterisk, we removed the, from consideration the, uh, uh, the very largest libraries and the very smallest libraries. Ooh, Deb, I think we almost, I think we very nearly are close enough into southern Illinois to pick up Dahlgren. Illinois. Really, truly, there's a Dahlgren, <laughs> Illinois, population 500, huh? and I guarantee that the experience of the Dahlgren Public Library doesn't have much bearing on um, uh, you know, what, what might need to happen here in, uh, in Belleville. We also did three other samples that, that turned out to be much more informative for our purposes in this study. We looked at Michigan libraries that serve 40 to 60,000 population. That effectively brackets Belleville's projected service population. We then we use the same population range with a regional sample, pulled out the libraries that serve 40 to 60,000 population, and then we pulled an additional sample looking at public libraries nationwide, 40 to 60,000 population. We subjected, or we, we reviewed six specific service measures. We looked at circulation, we looked at volumes held, volumes held per capita. We looked at non-print holding, the number of magazines held, and the number of computers provided for public use. And we then subjected each one of these cohorts on each one of these measures you know, to a kind of simple analysis, a simple scatter diagram that plotted you know, the relationship between Population served, and in this case, the number of volumes held. Population charts along the x-axis, volumes held along the y-axis, and each one of those dots on, the, on the, the field represents one of those libraries in Michigan that serve 40 to 60,000 population. I'll let you guess which one represents Belleville. It's the shining sun, right? The red line that you see going through the data field is a trend line. It represents the intersection of the experience of this cohort between population served and volumes held. Based on the experience of this cohort, when you come along that, that trend line, that's what this cohort suggests is, I'll call it the normative expected value for how many volumes you should house. You'll see a, a, a blue or a white diamond blue outline uh, along that, that trend line. That's the intercept point. According to uh, SEMCOG and other sources, the projected population of Belleville service area to the year, I think, 2035, I think we were using, because that's the latest numbers that are available, is a little under 55,000 population. If you read up from that point, the blue diamond indicates where that, that population level intercepts the trend line. And in this instance, what it's saying is that, again, based on the experience of this cohort, for a population of just under 55,000, we would expect the library to maintain a collection of about a little under 150,000 volumes. According to the latest available data from the IMLS, the library's current inventory is about 75,000 volumes. Key phrase here, based on the experience of this particular cohort, one of the things that decision makers need to do, I, I would argue one of the things that you as community members can help the library with is to you know, think about which of these cohorts has the most relevance to you in this community. Uh, many years ago, I worked with the library in Cedar Falls, Iowa. And we did you know, regional comparison, we did state level comparisons, and we did national level comparisons. You know, and the board looked at you know, most of those, and they, they said, they looked at it for maybe a minute. And they said, you know, Anders, people in this town don't give one wit. It's not quite what they said. But they said, well, they don't give one whit about what's going on nationally. But they want us to be the best damn library in the state of Iowa. You know? And with that insight from the board, you know, we turned our attention 
to looking at you know, the state level sample to see how that could be used to define excellence in service. Um, so, and you know, by contrast, I uh, worked with the library in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. <clears throat> Hattiesburg, Mississippi is one of the top libraries, has long been one of the top libraries in the state of Mississippi. And the board's pretty proud of that. When we looked at the state level comparisons, yeah, Hattiesburg was consistently ranked in the upper quartile. When we looked at them in the context of a national comparison, they ranked in the lower quartile consistently. Which it really said, what, it, what that says is, well, it says something about the state of the state of Mississippi, frankly. Okay. But it was illuminating for the library board in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, because it gave them an indication of you know, what they could be. You know, and so you know, Hattiesburg, in contrast to Cedar Falls, Iowa, Hattiesburg chose to focus on a national point of comparison. And they, you know, they just they approached it differently because they felt it would work differently in their community. Oh, I need to know the uh, the blue line that you see here. I brought my laser pen, got pen thing out, and I didn't. I'm not even using it. This blue line that you see here, the dash line, that represents the trend line that emerged from this same cohort from 10 years ago. So it gives you an idea of how these you know, how this landscape does shift. This, the, the old trend line, the historic trend line here, is pretty close to the, to the current trend line, which tells me that as a group, the libraries in Michigan serving 40 to 60,000 population are not aggressively growing their book collection. If we were to look at a similar chart here for non-print holdings, yeah, there would be a more noted variation because libraries over the last 10 years, by and large, have been aggressively adding to their non-print collections. If we were to look at a similar chart for computers offered for public use, there'd probably be an even greater shift. Because again, libraries have been very actively adding that, that resource. If we were to look at magazine holdings, most often you see the trend line dropping over the last 10 years. That's because most libraries are, are scaling back their magazine collections in response to the fact that 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 uh, that literature is increasingly available in electronic form. This slide summarizes some of the, the trend line intercept points for uh, different measures using uh, uh, different peer groups. Again, the, the groups that, that we felt were most relevant to the experience of the library here in Belleville are the three that are defined by population. Michigan libraries serving 40 to 60, regional U.S. libraries serving 40 to 60. Yeah, and what, what I see as I read across this chart is that there's a, I mean, there, there's a certain variability, uh, you know, for reasons I can't fully fathom, to be honest with you. The regional cohort produces a higher recommendation consistently across the board. Um, I suspect, actually I suspect, that's because the regional cohort includes libraries from a couple states that have a long history of offering very assertive library service, Ohio and Illinois. That 250 mile bubble does extend far enough to capture some of the Chicago metro area and Ohio. Those are two, those are two parts of the country that simply you know, for, for generations have had extensive collections, very active services. They are, the libraries in those parts of the country are more likely to be open more hours and have more support for capita and so on and so on and so on. Um, you know, but again, this, this might give you a sense of the range of resource inventories that might be expected here in Belden. There's, as, as we looked at some of these, these different uh, resource inventories and so on, we wound up coming down